nice to be talking to all of you. Um, I think a good starting place is thinking about what might be different in the summer from during the school year, and then thinking about how that interacts with the characteristics of ADHD itself. So, you know, on this slide that you see, I've just made a little bit of comparison that shows us basically that we've got a shorter time period, um, but not the consistency that we develop over a long period of time, like nine and a half months for a school year. Um, weeks may differ from one another. You might have a looser home schedule. One week might be different from another. Family members may be taking more time off. Um, in a lot of communities, it's common to take a week of one camp and a week of another camp, and so they are sometimes rotating, changing peer groups, very different from school. So let's keep in mind what some of the main characteristics are of kids with ADHD. They, as a group, are easily bored. They're prone to be impulsive. They need closer supervision often than kids who don't have ADHD. They may lose their stuff. They may be accident prone. They have a strong tendency to misjudge time. And they might lose new, newly developed self-management skills if those are not reinforced over the summer. Here are some good things to consider. Next slide. You want to try to have a good structure for each day. If each day tends to be a little different in terms of structure or activities, try to make a plan, communicate the plan, talk about it, write it down. You know how classrooms often have a schedule posted? Doing the same thing at home is not a bad idea. And then reviewing it with the child as often as necessary. You might think, OK, I went over the plan this morning. Now he knows it. No, you might go over it after each activity. And one good thing to do is to ask the child, can you, can, we're going over this, can you tell me what you remember about what we're doing today, do you remember what comes next? Have them kind of rehearse it over and over. It helps them stick to it if they know what it's going to be. Tell them they're doing a good job with remembering what their plan is for that day. Or maybe at the start of a new week, if you've got a new week of camp, start on Monday with this week, here's going to be our schedule for the week. Consider for your child what activities are going to be best. It might not be the same activities as your friend's kids are participating in. Think always about the interest level to your child because, again, kids with ADHD do tend to get bored. Think about the amount of supervision that your child requires and whether that activity is likely to provide enough supervision for your child. For example, if your child has a tendency to uh, wander off, a wilderness program might not be something that you want to enroll him or her in unless you know in advance that they're prepared to work with kids who might tend to wander off. Um, think about whether the adults in charge of that program have skills for kids with ADHD. Um, for some kids with ADHD, you know, there's such a strong interest in, say, a, a particular sport or computer activities that they don't, their ADHD doesn't even really appear during that activity. But for other kids with ADHD, it's pretty apparent throughout various activities, and that's where it's going to be important to know that, that the adults who are working with your child are prepared for the behaviors that your child's going to have. Um, and then think about whether or not the activities that you've chosen offer good opportunities for developing social skills. Again, if your child is particularly interested in the activity, it's likely that he or she is going to exhibit better social skills than an activity where he or she is feeling bored um, and would rather not be there. Bedtime. I'm sure that you know that bedtime is important for all of our kids. Um, having a good bedtime routine may be especially important in the, during the summer when schedules tend to, to switch a lot from day to day, from week to week, and also it gets darker later. So if you establish a good bedtime routine, at least for your Sunday through Thursday, when you're going to have your weekday activities that follow that good night of sleep, it's, it's going to enhance the child's chances for success and also give you some time to recover from whatever your day's activities have been before you're getting ready for the next one. Um, another thing about, about bedtime is that it can be really useful as a time for making and establishing and, and continuing your positive connection with your child. So if you have a routine that winds up with something that's soothing and enjoyable, like being read to or singing songs or listening to music together, 
that can help you establish your, your routine and go to bed with a positive, with a positive feeling. Sometimes, you know, when you think about school, you think about school as stressing academics and, and placing some restrictions on innate creativity that your child might have. And sometimes the creativity or athleticism or some other area of your child's development is, what, is where your child is going to derive the most self-esteem, sometimes more than from traditional academic activities. So summer is a time where if you choose activities well, the child might be able to demonstrate skills, explore some new media, uh, craft, wilderness, and so on, things that just aren't available during the school year and where the child might excel or maybe doesn't even have to excel but just can have the thrill of participating in something that is not competitive, is not achievement-oriented, again, provides opportunities for being with peers in a supportive setting. Summer as a time to support academic gains. Kids, all kids, can lose academic skills over the summer. For kids with ADHD, it can be especially important to keep to get them in a just keep their skills up so that when they hit skill in the fall, they don't when they hit school in the fall, they don't get discouraged. Um, if you're putting up a daily schedule and you build in an academic review time and keep it brief, maybe two or three even very brief academic review times during the day, maybe three or four times a week. That can help maintain the skills and they go back with a better footing into the new classroom. Um, also, some kids with ADHD also have learning problems, learning disabilities, and or just other reasons that they are behind in school. And for those kids, summer can be a really good time for making some gains. And I say that especially because a lot of times during the school year, tutoring necessarily is focused on keeping up the, with the class, whatever skills they're, they're, that their peers are being taught, and gaps form. It's troubling when that happens, but it happens. And filling in those gaps and really firming up the, the foundation can be done in the summer. And finally, reading for enjoyment. Again, there's so much that's required during the school year. But if the child can use his or her reading skills for picking, going to the library, picking books that are whatever interests them, maybe reading them together with you, not stressing so much the development of new skills as just the idea that you can actually read for enjoyment, talk about books, and share them with your parents and with siblings. The last point that I wanted to make before I started it started answering questions, because I knew you'd be asking questions about medication, is parents always ask what to do about the medication in the summer. And of course, this is a decision that you're going to make together with the physician who's prescribing the medication, if your child does take medication. And um, in general, I think you want to remember that the activities that you've chosen for your child still tap attention and self-control, things that your child might have trouble with, and that medication can help with that. So even if it's an athletic program, baseball requires that you pay attention, crafts require that you pay attention. Much easier for kids to pay attention, of course, when they are interested in something than when they're not. But there still may be issues with attention and self-control that would benefit from the, from the medication in the summer. and um, and Probably the major I'm saying this off the top of my head, but probably the majority of families whose kids are on medication do continue that over the summer. But some reasons why you might want to discuss with your physician not continuing it could have to do with appetite suppression um, in particular, um, which is an issue for a lot of kids who take stimulant medication. So um, some physicians say, well, this is a time when you can catch up on the weight gain. But it's something that you want to think about carefully, and certainly I wouldn't suggest to a family to automatically uh, take the child off medication in the summer because the summer really might be more successful um, on the medication. Mm -hmm.